Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Parujoy Guhathakutta and we are going to discuss whether the Adani's reports, what they are supposed to make to SEBI, disclosure, had proper disclosures or not regarding what would be called related party transactions. Parujoy, the argument that related parties uh, should disclose their dealings is true for the a company which is publicly listed, which is actually Adani's various companies. Seven of them. At seven least of them. seven, of, seven them. of them. And therefore, any transaction with a related party as defined by SEBI, then should be publicly disclosed. So in the particular case that we are talking about, which has hit the newspapers recently, was there proper disclosure between what is called CAM, and the fact that one of the partners in the firm was Adani's daughter-in-law. So this particular set of advices which they would have given to Adani's companies and the fact that there is a relationship there between a daughter-in-law and the owner, owners of the company uh, or being related by marriage to the company, that should or should not have been disclosed. This is the key issue. Thank you, Prabir, for having me once again on News Click. Uh, to take a few steps back, this has suddenly become newsworthy. Why? Because on the 19th of June, Andy Mukherjee, earlier known as Onindo Mukherjee, but he is a columnist, he writes for Bloomberg Opinion, he wrote an article with the title, Why Doesn't Adani Disclose Potential Conflicts? Now, it's interesting. In my opinion, uh, what Andy has done, Andy Mukherjee, is not just an opinion piece. He's actually investigated a lot. What has he said? I mean, he starts by saying, you know, Indian firms that start as family-run businesses, they don't want to give up control. Even when their shares are widely held by members of the public and we know what had happened to the case of the Adani Group, its shares after the Hindenburg Research Report came out on the 24th of January by this short-selling firm based in New York. Now, what is interesting is that the involvement of Paridhi Adani, she is married to Karan Adani, who is the older son of Gautam Adani, who happens to be the chairman of the Adani group of companies. Now, Pariti Adani heads the Ahmedabad office of CAM, Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas, one of India's leading law firms who specialize in corporate law. And she also happens to be a, an important functionary, a partner in that company. Now, one of the things is she and her husband are designated partners in a company called Adani Infracon LLP. That's a limited liability public, uh, uh, limited liability partnership. In response to Mr. Mukherjee's uh, Andy Mukherjee's question, they said that this is uh, a small company and it uh, uh, doesn't have any uh, significant interest in the Adani Group's businesses. It's just a personal entity holding art objects. Yet. Pariti Adani, on her own website, has advised several, several, several cases where the Adani group is involved. It has advised it in, in the acquisition of the 75% state stake in the Krishna Patnam Ports Company and two transactions involving Adani Green Energy and the French company Total. The question that would naturally arise that she has herself on her own website advertised that she is involved in mergers and acquisitions, including these relating to the Adani group. Now, let's take one more step back. It is known, and the Hindenburg research has highlighted, that the seven major listed companies that are in the Adani group they have collectively 578 subsidiaries. That's how, how complex the corporate structure is. And, and uh, I don't know how many thousand associate companies. And about more than 6,000 transactions in one financial year, the year that ended 
on the 31st of March 2022 could could be potential uh, could have potential related party transactions. Then comes the issue of what, who or what is a related party. And here again, as we have discussed in the past before, if you recall, the Supreme Court appointed committee, uh, which looked at the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI, and whether there was regulatory failure, talked about how these definitions have itself changed over the years. At the same time, the question that is now very, very important, if Paridhi Adani is involved in several transactions, including, and this is not just these, uh, the two involving Adani Green and uh, Total, as well as Krishna Patnam, also the very, very important acquisition of the Swiss company called Holsim. The cement businesses. Cement businesses. ACC earlier associated cement companies as part of the Tata group, then the Ambuja cements part of the Ambuja group. And it enabled the Adani group to become India's second biggest cement producer virtually overnight. Now she advised them. So the question is whether this should have been disclosed by the Adani group companies. Now, as Andy Mukherjee himself points out, opinion is divided. One section of experts and lawyers and accounting professionals, they believe it should have been disclosed. Another view is that you don't become a related party until you have what is called significant control. Now, you can say that Paridhi Adani does not have significant control over Cyril Amachan Mangadas, and therefore you are not a related party. Now, here, this is what the Adani group responded to Andy Mukherjee, and I read out in the interests of fairness. It said, we firmly assert that the stated findings and conclusions are misleading and do not display accurate understanding of the Indian regulatory framework and its disclosure requirements. It is important to note that Ms. Paridhi Adani, partner at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas, does not qualify as a related party under all prevalent laws and regulations. CAM and all its partners offer professional services to the Adani group in adherence to regulatory requirements, and we have made all necessary disclosures in this regard. To meet our business requirements, the Adani portfolio of companies engages and maintains professional relationship with several Indian and inter international and Indian law firms and your insinuations means Andy Mukherjee's insu in insinuations and aspersions concerning potential conflicts of interest with CAM or any other law firm or its partners are unfounded. All right. Then Andy Mukherjee elaborates. You see, he points out that he is not alone. In various financial statements, including the one by Adani Green Energy on the 1st of May, it said it has obtained opinions from independent law firms in respect of evalu evaluating relationships with parties having transactions. The question, is CAM independent? Second question, in the notes to Adani Total Gas, they say that they are, uh, you know, all the uh, uh, applicable rules, they are uh, adhering to it. Then Andy Mukherjee asked the Adani group, which is this law firm from which you've taken advice? Because there are other law firms also. And therefore, they, in this case, the auditors don't say anything, Shah Dhandarya, and the Adani group, which had earlier said that, you know, it is not mandatory to disclose the details of the lawyer's report. Now, do not respond. So they neither confirm nor deny that the so-called independent law firm is Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas or not, in which Mr. Gautam Adani's own daughter-in-law is an important functionary. Now, this is important. Why? Because it's not just this company. Deloitte, Haskins and Cells has raised several concerns about the results, financial results of Adani Ports. And the auditors have said that they cannot confirm whether three entities with this company, Adani 
ports had transactions were indeed unrelated or not, as claimed by the company. And therefore, it provided what is called a qualified opinion. Other auditors have done more or less the same. So once again, Prabir, as we had discussed earlier, the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And where you should look at the fine print of the law and simple common sense. And this is what I think Andy Mukherjee has said. Should India Incorporated, including the Adani Group, disclose much more than it does so far? So the question is, what is the SEBI going to do about it? Precisely. And is it in the fairness to those who buy shares in the market, because these shares are widely traded, what is the disclosure that SEBI should really insist that companies make? One, as you said rightly, what is the letter of law? And we can go on discussing that till kingdom come. It can go to courts. It can take years. Other is if the stock exchange has to keep its reputation, that it is a fair place for both those who buy shares and those who sell shares, then what is the disclosure it should insist to be fair to those who are in the share market, not those companies, not the companies whose shares are traded. Correct. Because SEBI is a platform for trading shares and therefore uh, uh, the no, need no, no. for SEBI, SEBI as the regulator of the capital markets has to ensure what is called fair price discovery, that the market forces one, which is the same logic used why all public list, publicly listed companies have to have a minimum 25% yes. shareholding yes. among uh, public uh, uh, interests. The real issue is that it is to be fair to those who come into the share market and buy shares and therefore they need to be protected, not those who are listed companies who control the finances of these companies and who therefore have an ability to really make the picture rosier than it should be. And therefore, the protection that SEBI has to exercise is for the those who are not owners of company, but who are, play, who are in the stock market for either their savings or those companies which are investing on behalf of such people. So therefore, the protection is really not for those who are 75% and below. The, 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 the controllers, the promoters, what do you want to call so it? On, but it's really for the rest 25% and above that they are the shareholders who need to be protected. And that's the purpose of the regulator. Absolutely so, correct. And now we have to just wait and watch because the Supreme Court has given time to SEBI, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, till the... 14th of August yeah. to submit its report. So we wanted more time, remember that. Yeah. And so but we have I, to I'm wait. I'm saying that the issue is one of Adani is only one issue, but it's really for the fairness of the stock market in general and protecting the investors who are not the promoters or the controllers of the companies. And that is SEBI's task. So if the laws or the rules and the regulations are ambiguous, it is for SEBI to see not only, okay, we can argue, we cannot rectify the past, but at least going forward, what are the requirements that SEBI should impose on those who control these companies. Thank you very much. Thank Bob, you very much, Praveer. For being with us and taking us through a rather, shall we say, difficult exercise, understanding what the regulatory requirements are for the stock market. Thank this you, Praveer. This is all the time we have today for our discussions with Paranjoy. We'll come back to you with more such issues and more such discussions, particularly with Paranjoy, who has been discussing a number of these issues for a long time with us.